as I have for several weeks now spoken to my colleagues about the nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh, I return again to further elaborate on where we are on that process. Two weeks from today, Judge Brett Kavanaugh will appear before the Senate Judiciary Committee for the first day of his confirmation hearing. I'm quite excited to finally hear from him in that forum. He's one of the most qualified nominees ever picked for the Supreme Court, and he's contributed a great deal to his community and the legal profession besides being an outstanding judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, the other side has apparently found very little in his record that's objectionable. The only thing that I keep hearing about is their unprecedented demand for millions and millions of pages of irrelevant documents on top of hundreds of thousands of pages that we have already received. Indeed, the Senate Democratic leaders have demanded the search of every email and every scrap of paper from every one of the hundreds of White House aides who came and went for the entire eight years of the George W. Bush presidency. And the Senate Democratic leaders even refused to utilize search terms and other ways to limit the universe of millions and millions of pages of records that would require the consecutive review by the archives and both the former and incumbent president's teams of lawyers and do this even before the Senate Judiciary Committee could begin its own search. These reviews would have taken many, many months, and some people would say it could take beyond this year. We know the true reason for their unprecedented document demand. That is to deny Judge Kavanaugh confirmation until after the midterm elections when the Senate Democrats hope to win back the Senate and block Judge Kavanaugh's nomination forever. Democratic leaders announced their opposition to Judge Kavanaugh immediately after he was nominated. Now, can you believe that? Some senators announced opposition to any one of the 25 potential nominees before the president even announced that he was picking Judge Kavanaugh. The minority leader said that he would oppose Judge Kavanaugh with everything he's got. This desire to obstruct, to obstruct the entire process explains their partisan push to bury the Senate Judiciary Committee in a mountain of irrelevant paperwork. They also want to divert attention from a very impressive record that Judge Kavanaugh has. Democratic leaders know that Judge Kavanaugh is the exact type of justice that the American people want. And by the way, the president, as a candidate, told the people that he was going to appoint. When he announced, way before his election, the names of the type of people that he was thinking about. Judge Kavanaugh has served for 12 years on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. During that time, he authored more than 300 opinions and joined hundreds others. The Supreme Court has, in 13 separate cases, adopted a legal position advanced by Judge Kavanaugh's 
in his opinions on the D.C. Circuit. That is a very impressive record that few people on a Circuit Court of Appeals can claim. The majority staff on the Senate Judiciary Committee has already received more than 10,000 pages of judicial opinions that uh, Judge Kavanaugh wrote or joined, more than 17,000 pages of materials that Judge Kavanaugh provided in response to the most robust questionnaire ever submitted to a Supreme Court nominee, and more than 260 pages of emails and other records from Judge Kavanaugh's executive branch legal service. This morning, the committee received close to 170,000 pages of additional records from Judge Kavanaugh's executive branch legal service. We now have more than 430,000 pages from Judge Kavanaugh's time in the executive branch, by far the most ever received from a Supreme Court nominee. The majority staff will finish reading every one of these pages before Judge Kavanaugh's hearing, which starts the day after Labor Day. I'm following the precedent that was established during Justice Kagan's confirmation when the Senate asked for many, but not all, of Justice Kagan's executive branch documents. We received documents from two out of three executive branch positions that Justice Kagan held. We received documents from Justice Kagan's time in the White House Counsel's Office and Domestic Policy Council. Senators from both parties agreed not to request internal documents from her time in the Office of Sol Solicitor General because of their sensitivity. Likewise, then, we're asking for documents from two of Judge Kavanaugh's positions in the executive branch, but not from a third, following the practice of Justice Kagan's confirmation. We've asked for documents from Judge Kavanaugh's time in the White House Counsel's Office and the Office of Independent Counsel. But we didn't ask for documents from his time as Staff Secretary because even more so than Justice Kagan's Solicitor General's documents, they're incredibly sensitive to the executive branch. I'll add that both positions for which we requested Judge Kavanaugh's documents were legal positions. Those documents could shed some light on his legal thinking. The staff secretary, another position that Judge Kavanaugh held at the White House, is a non-legal position and wouldn't reveal anything about Judge Kavanaugh's legal thinking. For Justice Kagan, on the other hand, we didn't receive documents from her time in one of the two legal positions that she held. We didn't receive her Solicitor General documents despite a heightened need for them to assess Judge Justice Kagan's legal thinking. After all, Justice Kagan had no legal or uh, judicial experience. In other words, she was not a judge prior to going to the Supreme Court, as Judge Kavanaugh is. In contrast to Judge Kavanaugh's 12-year judicial track record, the 307 opinions that Kavanaugh wrote and the hundreds more he joined, Judge Kagan wrote or joined zero opinions. Judge Kavanaugh wrote or joined over 10,000 pages of judicial opinions compared to Justice Kagan's 
zero pages. In short then, we have received many more pages of more relevant documents for Judge Kavanaugh than we did for Justice Kagan. This more thorough and more transparent production is also on top of the thousands of pages of Judge Kavanaugh's publicly available materials, including his extensive and impressive judicial record. Democratic leaders nevertheless accuse me of hiding documents. Now consider the hundreds of thousands that are available, and I'm being accused of hiding documents. They're doing that because I have agreed to hold some documents as committee confidential. But during Justice Kagan's and Justice Gorsuch's nominations, we agreed to receive as committee confidential documents that contain material that are restricted by the federal law that we call the Presidential Records Act. As the current chairman, that's exactly what I agreed, I've agreed to do this time. As I've explained many times over the last month, I agreed to receive documents on a committee confidential basis as an initial matter to allow the committee to accelerate our review of Judge Kavanaugh's record while at the same time making sure that restricted material like social security numbers for individuals, bank information for individuals, or confidential advice given to the president are not exposed to the public, as everybody would expect us to be that careful. Then Chairman Leahy also agreed to receive documents on a confidential, committee confidential basis in 2010, quote, to permit the committee prompt access to them, end of quote. Now, I have done exactly the same thing in the case of Judge Kavanaugh. All of those documents don't necessarily remain confidential forever because there's a process. They're reviewed a second time. And if they don't contain any materials restricted by law for public access, we quickly release those documents to the public. We thus end up in exactly the same place as we did with Justice Kagan and Justice Gorsuch. Material restricted by the statute is held committee confidential while non-restricted material is released to the public. I'd like to add that all documents that we have received, including Committee Confidential, are at this very moment available to every member of the Senate. My staff is happy to make these documents available to any senator interested in reviewing them. Now, my friends on the other side of the aisle complain, complain that a, per, a lawyer by the name of Bill Burke, rather than the National Archives, is deciding what is considered restricted. But that's not true at all. The Archives has been reviewing Judge Kavanaugh's emails as I requested. These archivists are public employees and they have informed President Bush and President Trump that in the opinion of the professional archival, archival staff, nearly two-thirds of the emails that, that these public servants have reviewed thus far contain restricted material and should not be released to the public. That means that under the same standard applied to Justice Kagan and Justice Gorsuch, the committee will have to hold two-thirds of the documents reviewed by the archives as committee confidential when we receive them. 
Following historic, historical practice, officials' records generally are produced to the Senate for our review. Personal records generally are not. And the Obama-appointed archivist of the United States and his team of career archivists are making the ultimate decision on whether Judge Kavanaugh's executive branch records are official, available to the committee and to the public, or personal. So, it's simply absurd to suggest that anyone is hiding anything. So I hope I don't hear that complaint anymore. I hope that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle put aside politics and reconsider their reckless demands for immediate release for the whole world to see of documents that contain full names, dates of birth, social security numbers, bank account numbers, personal communications with family members, other sensitive matters affecting personal privacy, and of course some of the most sensitive issues related to the President's core constitutional duties. I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum.